this is full time. Like no matter what, what you, you want to do with it, if you want to be really, really good, it's full time. You don't have to be playing full time, but you're always thinking about the game. Like I wake up and I'm showering, thinking about League of Legends. I'm eating, thinking about League of Legends. Having a coffee, thinking about League of Legends. No matter what I'm doing, it's always like, how can I maximize like what I learned today? And yeah, I think if everyone is in that mindset, it's like a very, very helpful one. Once you get to like a higher sort of ELO rating, as like an amateur player, you kind of get there from being good at clicking buttons or decent at clicking buttons. Um, and once you start popping into games with you know, pros that you've, you've been watching, like from OPL, like for me it was Swiffer and, and Spooks. So yeah, I used, to watch, I used to watch them and be like, wow, imagine if I got to play with them one day and obviously here I am now. The first thing I sort of wanted to find out was like, was this something I wanted to do? In the sense that like I asked them about the lifestyle. Um, was it something, could I play games 24 hours a day? I didn't know if it was something I could do. Um, obviously it's not like that, but. And then after that, it was just kind of looking for any sort of like competitions I could, could join up to. I ended up talking to a few teams about being a sub. Um, a few people have been like really sort of surprised, I guess, with like a rookie with a decent work, work ethic. And yeah, I think people were, were quite excited to at least like see me progress, whether they wanted to be involved with it or not. Um, and then obviously I got picked up to play on Sin. I probably wasn't ready in, in hindsight to be in that full-time lifestyle, like you know, emotional maturity and just you know, all that stuff combined is, is really, really tough, but yeah. There's another stepping stone to, you know, back to OCS and now, yeah. What are your takes on Dream? Young man took himself to Korea. You said he also yep. hung out in your house a little bit. Yep, he was uh, close friends with, with Lost. He, this is a guy who is desperate to get better. He, he came to our house, he stayed with us for a little bit just to, to work with Lost and, and hopefully improve. Sent himself to Korea, like I said, on his own dime, trying to improve. He spent a lot of time at the Chief House as well, training with them. Um, this is a guy who has a fantastic attitude towards improvement and, and I think eventually he will make something of himself. And I think that he's also got better. I mean, we saw against yep. teams like Order, he was able to buffer those jumps. He's playing on the knife edge. He's trying to yep. take that step. Yep. And he's I certainly think for a young man, 17 years of age, he's got leadership quality, which you don't see in every player. Makes me excited for him. Yeah, I really wanted to go to Korea for, for a while, um, probably from about like year 10. And I tried to get a job, which I ended up getting. I'd seen a few documentaries on esports, uh, especially, specifically League of Legends in Korea. And just looking at like the internet cafes and just the way that they trained and lived was like really foreign to me. Um, definitely not the same grindy culture that I'm now sort of semi immersed in. Um, and yeah, no, I thought if I just threw myself there and improved enough in like the high intensity environment, then like people would have to start taking notice. Like a kid that isn't, you know, well sort of known in the community just goes to Korea and does decently or, or does all right like you know people start turning heads eventually so probably the most important things like characteristics and attributes of like a person that wants to chase it um regardless of skill level i think being able to think very critically and be open-minded um is like probably the hardest part because a lot of the times you will think you're correct and you could be but again like i said there's so many correct ways to play the game that you need to understand where other people are coming from and always like be able to consider and, and change your mind depending on what you know what's best for you and your team. I think like resilience, I guess. I mean it sounds very very cliche and probably a lot of the things that most sort of work fields would say, oh this is important. But I think it's very, very important um, in esports especially and, and League of Legends. Because yeah, there's gonna be times where like you're gonna lose a lot of games in a row and you're going to lose games that you shouldn't lose um, and you're going to be practicing like as hard as you can like you're going to be working really really hard and things aren't going to be going your way and unfortunately you can't just say oh, okay this sucks like I'm just going to go home now and, and chill when you're playing on a team with four other players that are you know committed to developing with you it's like you really have to trust each other in and out of game um, you know, if someone makes a call in game to do something, you have to like really, really commit to it. Because if you don't and it happens on game day, it's like, it's hard to have the best possible outcome for the call. Even though it could be incorrect, 
there are so many correct ways to play League of Legends that you, know, you just have to all be on the same page and, and really hope for the best. I think that's something I've struggled on from not really like trusting people, I guess, in solo queue um, to make the correct play and then seeing something that I might see in solo queue, but they might know, know something that I might not. My favorite memory from pursuing League would probably be like both Korean boot camps that I've been on. Um, because I think it brought out like the worst and the best in me. Um, I think when I was there recently for, for three months and two of those months I was by myself in like a super small place, like just playing on a desk, like nonstop. Um, like it was, it was pretty bad. I learned a lot of things like about myself and like the way that I need to like think and, and act to, to be, to get better and better and better. But then once I ended up joining Order, it was two months of like awful, it was really, really hard. And then, you know, I moved to a, to a hotel, which is obviously a huge, huge step up. And then, you know, hang out with, with all my new teammates. And it was, it was really, really good, you know, being in, a, being in that high stress environment with other people that you can joke around with and stuff. I think that was the most rewarding for sure. I think I definitely had like thoughts of like, oh, like this is what all my friends are doing. I sort of see them all at, you know, uni parties or, or whatever, or most of them. Um, and I'm like, oh, you know, that could have been me. But at the same time, it's like, if I want to go back and study, like I can. If I want to, in 20 years go, oh, I should have, you know, chased this because it was something I was really passionate about. Like I can't do that in 20 years. So I'm just taking the 100% option, just chasing it all out of the time. And, and uh, we'll sort whatever happens out after that, after that.